we've all done this. Um, I still think this is, am this is amazing, isn't it? You know, when you twirl the button. It's amazing how slowly you can do the, the water and the water doesn't come out, just about. <laughs> but the question that I had in the What Happens Next, which has caused quite a bit of discussion, is I'm going to take my orange and float the orange in the water. And oranges float with the skin on. They sink with the skin off, but they float with the skin on. So when I twirl this round, will the orange still float? Will the orange be pressed against the bottom of the beaker of water, bucket of water? Or will it, <coughs> will it still float? Now intuition, I think, intuition sort of says that'll be pushed out, doesn't it? Intuition says that. Um, but it doesn't, it still floats. Um, you know, you, you, this we, if you were doing this properly, we'd labour this point and we'd get different opinions and we'd say, oh yes, that's interesting, and so, so and we'd sort of almost hesitate and, and nearly do it. But it does float because the, the difference in weight that the orange experiences, the difference in apparent weight that the orange experiences, which is due to an apparent G, is also the same as what happens within the water the buoyancy force, which depends on an HDG, right? The G in that is increased or decreased as well. So the orange still floats, right? And if you watch carefully, I'm going to do it slowly for people to see. You know, I usually get it on my head, <laughs> right? Can you see that? The orange is still floating. Quite an interesting one. And it's to do with, you can do with that with um, apparent weightlessness. You know, it's the same as the lift problem. I used to like those in the sixth form, what's the force on the weight when the lift's accelerating up? 